Hi everyone, it's time for a new video and I'm so fucking excited for this one. I'm gonna be reading sapphic books that Twitter recommends. While reading these books and talking to you about it and vlogging about it, I'm also gonna mention some creators who read these books and recommend these books and just recommend sapphic books in general. I want to find new sapphic books and I want to be able to recommend all of you new sapphic books. And so I felt like what better way to vlog about some sapphic books that a lot of people recommend and give you people to watch who will help you and who help me find sapphic books. So without any further ado, let's jump into the first book. So the first book is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. And the people that I want to mention with this book are actually Amber and Sasha. So I'm going to be reading books that each of them recommends as well later in the video, but the two of them actually have a blog together. So I just wanted to quickly jump in here and kind of clarify something. Uh, so in the previous clip, I mentioned Amber and Sasha, and then I was saying that um, they have a blog together and that Sasha also has a YouTube channel, but both of those things are actually on hiatus and I think neither Amber nor Sasha know if they're gonna get back to it, but I'm still gonna have the link linked down below and with their blog, they still have some really great like lists of sapphic books. There's a sapphic books with uh, disability representation, sapphic books um, by authors of color, and just different kinds of things where you can still, you know, find some recommendations. I love them both so much and so I'm gonna have that linked down below. So the first book that I'm gonna be reading is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. So I'm actually already really far into the book. I'm on the page 210, so a little bit over a halfway through. And first of all, can we just take a moment to look at this cover? It is <laughs> beyond gorgeous. It is one of my most anticipated releases of this year, and so far it has most certainly not disappointed. So, it is basically set 200 years after Cinderella died, and it is set in this absolutely disgusting society that is extremely misogynistic and classist. Like, every household has to have, like, a man who is, you know, in charge, and the women can't do anything on their own. It is terrible, and it was really hard to read about. At some points so please make sure to check the trigger warnings because there's a lot of terrible things that happen all around the main character in the city and everything the main character is a lesbian and she's very headstrong and like determined and she doesn't want to you know conform to all of this terrible shit and so she wants to escape and she wants to just build a better life for herself and she doesn't want to be a victim of this disgusting system and so that's kind of what the story is about and there is a bit of a sapphic romance definitely not the main part of the book so far nothing really has happened i absolutely adore sophia i think she is wonderful and I felt so connected to her since the beginning and um, there was a new character that was introduced like a while ago now where I'm at, but I love her so much. It's definitely, I think it's even heavier than I expected it because I didn't know the part of like what the society was like exactly. I didn't really know that. I didn't really know much at all going into this book. So it's definitely more intense than I expected, um, but so far just it's really powerful and really intriguing as well. Just so immersed in the story and I don't want to stop reading, so yeah, I'm gonna go finish it. So it's time for an update. I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit weird. It's gloomy, so I have the light on, but I finished reading Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron and... <sighs> Honestly, I am speechless. I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to fully express my thoughts and emotions about this, but it was most certainly a five-star read. I loved this. It was everything that I wanted it to be, and I just, it impacted me 
so much and it made my heart ache and it shattered my heart into millions of pieces but then it kind of put them back together and it is like I said really hard to read about at some points because the reality that we're in in the book is so cruel and terrible but then the main character she is just such an amazing person <laughs> like she is just so kind and selfless and she is strong in her own way like she's just so brave and she doesn't want to give up even though pretty much everyone around her wants to give up and she just knows what she wants and she wants to fight for a better life not only for herself but for everyone else too and i just loved this so much and i will definitely think about it forever and i will cherish it and definitely read it again because this was such a powerful story and it was just you know about girls overthrowing the patriarchy was kind of the main thing and just the main character fighting to take her life into her own hands and just trying to make the world a better place for everyone and like i mentioned there is a sapphic romance in it but what i just said are the main parts of the story and then the sapphic romance is just like kind of sprinkled in and i did love what we got with that i felt like it was just so soft and tender and beautiful and please 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 pick it up and read it if you can because it's absolutely incredible and it needs more love. I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about it, so please read it. I think I'm going to wrap that up here, and I loved this so much. The next book that I'm going to be reading is Who I Was With Her by Nita Tyndall. This is a YA contemporary. So the person that I want to mention with this is Elise from The Petite Punk. Um, she gave it five stars, and she even replied on like one of my updates about the book had to mention her. She also has a booktube channel and I love her and you know that's the case with all these people. I'm probably gonna say it anyways automatically but just know I love all these people and you need to check them out so link down below. Hi everyone so it is time to read and that is Who I Was With Her by Nita Tyndall. So I am already halfway through the book and I'm listening to the audiobook and I am loving it so much. It is a YA contemporary and it is about Corinne who is a runner and she is a bisexual girl and she is in high school and basically at the beginning of the book her girlfriend dies in an accident. Um, Corinne isn't out and neither was Maggie, who is the girlfriend. And so no one actually knew that they were together. They always hung out in secret, but they were together for a year. And so they were really close. And so this is an extremely painful experience. And it's obviously it mainly deals with grief and loss and just kind of trying to figure out your identity and accept yourself and figuring out everything around your sexuality and everything and I absolutely adore it. Like <laughs> the book is told in two timelines and it kind of, I don't know if it's like, it's not always like one chapter is in the past and the other one is in the present but you know it like switches a lot and I feel like that is perfect. That is the way that makes the most sense for the story. It's you know yeah it works perfectly and it's never confusing and it is packed with so much emotion. It is such a heart-wrenching beautiful painful story and I feel like it's the kind of story that will like break your heart but also make you feel hopeful and it definitely will have a lot of healing in it as well i feel like the audiobook the narrator does such an incredible job at like their voice is filled with so much emotion that like you know you can feel the sadness in it you can hear the pain and suffering in it and it is just it makes the experience even more powerful and just absolutely incredible it's a slower story but it doesn't feel like slow paced in the sense that like there's nothing happening that there's it's boring it's not in the slightest I feel like 
is just, you know, super character focused. It's super focused on Corinne's just character development and her journey. Hi everyone, so it is time for an update. I finished reading Who I Was With Her last night. I absolutely loved it. I did a book look for it today. <laughs> well, I feel like there's not a lot of new things that I want to tell you about it because I feel like there's a lot that I actually said yesterday, but it is one of the most like impactful, like beautiful books that are filled with so much emotion and they are just, it was just such an incredible experience. It was a sad story, but it was also really hopeful and it wasn't always super sad. And I absolutely loved the way that grief was dealt with in the book, how it was depicted. I felt like it was so well done. So much resonated with me in this book. Like everything in um, Corinne's journey, not not even with the loss and everything, but even with like figuring out her sexuality and like figuring out everything, it wasn't something that was linear. It wasn't something that, you know, like she felt like shit and then she felt good. It was like she felt okay and then she felt confused and then she felt terrible and then she felt good. And it was so realistic and so impactful and just so beautiful. I felt like it was heartbreaking in the most beautiful way. <laughs> I really, 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 really recommend it. It is just... I loved it so much. So the next book is going to be Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina May Safi and this one is another YA contemporary and the main person that I've heard talk about this book is Fadwa from Word Renders. I have talked about them before many times <laughs> and Fadwa has just you know gushed about this book and recommended it multiple times. In general Fadwa reads so many diverse books in like all kinds of ways and so definitely check them out for some absolutely amazing recommendations yet again <laughs> so it is time for the next book and that's gonna be tell me how you really feel by amina mesafi and i am really enjoying it i'm at 36 percent and i honestly um i was really excited about the book and i didn't really remember what it was about much <laughs> just that it's a way contemporary and it has something to do with film and it is enemies to lovers. It is about our two main characters, Rachel and Sana. I really hope I'm saying the name right. Rachel basically has hated Sana ever since she first saw her. <laughs> Cause Sana is um, kind of like a popular g girl at school and, and Rachel is just feels a little bit more like an outsider. The two of them have to work together on a movie. So Rachel is making a movie and Sana basically has to act in it and yeah so I don't really like enemies to lovers in uh YA contemporary like contemporary in general but especially in YA because like I hate arguments and anything like that and it usually is just not something I like my kitten is leaving me and she's gonna want me to open the door <laughs> look how fucking cute she is <laughs> Are you gonna go? So yes, because of this, the beginning, I was kind of like a little bit wary and I wasn't sure if I was going to fully love it, but I'm really enjoying it now. And it definitely feels like a book that is just really easy to read and quick to read. And I am so happy that I'm finally reading this and I'm just so excited to watch them fall in love and I'm really rooting for them. I didn't fully love Rachel at the beginning, but I'm definitely, I think, gonna grow to like her and I love Sana so much. And also it is set when the two of them are kind of near the end of high school. I don't know how old they are exactly, but... They're, you know, like thinking about college and like applying to college and everything, which I have found is definitely my favorite in YA. And I'll probably update you when I'm finished with the book, unless I have a lot of thoughts, you know, while reading it. And yeah. So I just finished reading Tell Me How You Really Feel. And I cried a little bit when I finished it, which was literally just now and holy shit so I 
love this book. I mean, I already kind of told you, I pretty much told you everything, but there are a few things that I want to talk about. I loved the romance so fucking much, and the relationship that the two main characters had with their parents was also really strong in the book, and I loved it. So Rachel lives with her dad, and they have a really strong relationship, and I just, I loved the moments between the two of them. It was just so nice, and Sana lives with her mom. And she also is kind of like trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life and all of that. So it's a little bit complicated. Um, and she also has a complicated relationship with her dad. And just she deals a lot with trying to figure out what direction she wants to go in in terms of college and everything. And so there were quite a few important conversations around that. And I just loved it so much. The one thing that I absolutely hated was the conflict like I just I hate arguments anything like that I absolutely hated that but it didn't last that long and like I don't want it to change my rating or anything because like overall I just loved the book so fucking much I rooted for Rachel and Sana so fucking hard <laughs> and I just had so much fun with it and it was just such a wonderful book and one thing that I find really cool is that um it has completely casual queerness. It's almost never even, like, addressed, really. It's never, there's no, like, coming out or anything like that, which, obviously, I don't have anything against these books, and I literally, I mean, you know, I read Who I Was With Her, which deals with that, so obviously, like, I don't have anything against that, but I feel like in YA Contemporary especially, it's, we need a little bit more books that are just more casual queerness and just focused on other things than coming out and all of that. And so that was really fucking cool in this book and I loved that and it was just so fucking good. I think I'm gonna give it 4.5 stars. It's not completely a 5 star, but it was just so good. I loved it. I'm so happy that I finally read it. <sighs> I'm so happy. The next book that I'm going to be reading is Girl, Serpent, Thorn by Melissa Basherdust. So this book is a YA fantasy. So this book I want to read mainly because of Sasha, who I mentioned with, you know, the blog and Amber and everything. <laughs> and so again, she also has a booktube channel along with the blog and she's talked about this book quite a lot on Twitter and um, she's been making me want to read it for ages. But then there are also other people who recommended it and really liked it, which one of them is Mina from Mina reads. Um, I love her so much. She reads a lot of romances and just all kinds of different books and her videos are absolutely hilarious. Like um, the way that she talks about books is always just really funny and I just, she's iconic. And <laughs> so I again really recommend her channel. And then also Boston from Boston Reads Books really enjoyed this book and has recommended it. And yes. <laughs> so it is time to read Girl Serpent Thorn and I'm already at page 122 and I'm really enjoying this. Also can I just say floppy paperbacks are the best thing in the universe and I wish every single one of my books could be a floppy paperback <laughs> and I yes so this is a YA fantasy that is Persian inspired and it's about this girl Soraya who basically was born with this curse that she kills everyone that she touches so she wants to find a way to break the curse and that's kind of how it all begins and I'm really enjoying this. So the way that the plot is developing and everything that's happening is really different from what I expected but like I'm liking it and there's basically kind of stray baiting in this <laughs> which is cool. I did not expect that. I kind of knew that um, this has a sapphic romance in it but I did know before going in which I'm really glad that I knew that that while it does have a sapphic romance, it's not a big part of the plot. Like, it doesn't happen um, at the beginning or, you know, it, it takes a really long time. Like, where I'm at, there's, like, if I didn't know that this had a sapphic romance in it, I would not expect it at all. I would not have a clue at this point that there would be anything like that. <laughs> um, so, I actually, like, I don't know if that's a spoiler 
but I didn't really consider it that. So hopefully you all don't consider it a spoiler either. What I really like about this that I heard from other people as well before reading it is that this book really does read like a fairy tale and the writing is so beautiful and I'm just so intrigued and interested and I'm just really excited. I love Soraya and I love the whole aspect of like in the dedication, the author says, to anyone who has ever felt poisonous or monstrous or bristling with thorns. And that whole aspect of it, of, you know, like a princess who is poisonous and who is considered a monster, I just love it so much. And I just, I can see, I can feel that there are so many, like, important messages that are coming in this book. And it's definitely, like, a strong, it definitely feels like a reimagining of just, like, a fairy tale that is just so powerful and inspiring. Really excited about this. Yeah. <laughs> so I have officially finished reading Girl Servant Thorn by Melissa Bashardust and I loved it. I ended up giving it five stars and I'm so happy that I loved it. So um, I don't really know how many new thoughts I have. I absolutely loved Soraya and I absolutely loved the love interest and I kind of don't want to tell you much more because I'm scared of it being spoilers because like there's a lot that happened in this book. There was a lot of twists and turns that I didn't expect and the plot was really cool and I just loved how the story unraveled and how everything happened. It was such a wonderful story and it definitely focused a lot on Soraya and her journey. You know, I don't, I think I mentioned it. I've been struggling with fantasy but this was still so quick to read and like easy to process and because I loved Soraya even though it was like plot focused and plot driven, um, I still enjoyed that because like I have been struggling with like action packed um, stories, but I feel like as long as I love the main character, um, because characters matter most to me, then I can still really enjoy it. And this book actually also really made me want to read more fantasy, which is amazing, because the next book I'm going to be reading <laughs> is going to be another fantasy. And so I just absolutely loved it. I loved the magic, all the myths, all the creatures, and I absolutely loved the romance. So the one thing that I need to make clear is that it's a tiny part of the book. If I have one complaint, it's that I wish we got more because I loved it so much and I just want more content with the two characters. Like, please. Because <laughs> I just loved it. Like, oh my god, it was amazing. So, I feel like that is a complaint I have so often when, you know, in fantasy books with romantic subplots that I just love the romance, but I crave more of it. So I really just, fantasy romance needs to be more of a genre. Like actually romance in a fantasy, like just super focused on romance. That is my dream. We're gonna get there. And it actually also made me want to write my fantasy romance books so bad. <laughs> so, you know, we love a book that, like, inspires and motivates and is super enjoyable and wonderful. And it was just so good. And I'm so happy that I finally read it. So you should all definitely read this book. And even if you're like me and you don't read for fantasy, easily or you know like you are struggling with fantasy I feel like this book is perfect because um it was just so like I felt so immersed in the story immediately it was really fast paced and there's like what I absolutely adore is a standalone fantasy that are uh, around 300 pages which is the case for this book so I think that is all that I'm gonna say about the book and we're gonna move on to the last read of the video. And last but not least, we have Breaking Legacies by Zoe Reed. So Amber, who I mentioned earlier, um, I actually asked her on like what book she would recommend because she talks about so many sapphic books. She told me to read Breaking Legacies and so that's gonna be happening and this is a YA fantasy. Hey everyone, it is time to finally read the last book and that is Breaking Legacies by Zoe Reed. So I started this book a little while ago and then I just, I kind of had to 
read books for other videos. I'm at 35% and this book is a YA fantasy that is obviously sapphic. It's basically about these two girls, Ava and Kiana, I don't know if that's how you pronounce the name, is sent to basically find this princess who ran away. And so she goes on a journey to find her. And I was actually so happy that, like, it's not about... The book in general isn't about her finding the princess, but, like, that happens really quickly. And then together they go on a journey. And I love the fact that, like, the two main characters, the romance, like, it starts really quickly and um we get so much content and i love that so much like in so many fantasy romances like um not just sapphic ones but in general i feel like just the romantic subplots are often like i crave more it doesn't satisfy my romance needs <laughs> and in this book like there's been a lot of content already it's kind of like a slow burn romance, but at the same time, they catch feelings for each other really quickly. Um, but I am I'm loving it. I love the two of them so much and I'm rooting for them and it's kind of like a forbidden romance cuz Kiana is key. I really hope I'm saying her name right. I um, um she she basically is just like a normal person <laughs> and Ava is a princess so you know obviously um Ava is a princess and it's just not allowed to have any kind of romantic um thing going on with the princess so I absolutely love forbidden romances it's definitely one of my favorite tropes and yeah so it's just really fun so far I'm really invested and I'm really excited to see where they go next so it's definitely partially like a journey story but at the same time I think there's gonna be like a palace setting and a lot of other stuff happening so yeah it's really cool really fun really quick to read I had to take a break but like every time I do read it it's really quick to get through also there are gonna be dragons which it's so funny because it's literally on the cover but I forgot about the fact that there are gonna be dragons and I remembered it and I got super excited so they they're in there they're not there yet but Amber said that they're there um in the second half and that she loves them so I'm super excited for the dragons to be there and yeah so I'm gonna shut up I might update you when I'm finished with the book but I'm really excited to keep reading I have a candle lit half tea and I am so excited to keep reading. So yeah. Hi everyone. So I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit weird. I literally always say that in this location. But I finished Breaking Legacies by Zoe Reed. And I really enjoyed it. Don't remember what I said to you for the last time. I was probably talking about Kiana and Ava. And that the romance is really cute. And I don't know if I mentioned that... Um, it felt really kind of like heavy on the romance, so that did change a little bit. But I do feel like we get a lot of content with them and more than we usually get in fantasy books that have a romantic subplot or at least like the sapphic books that I've read that are fantasy books with a romantic subplot. <laughs> um, so I was really happy to just get a lot of content because I just, you know, I love romances. I live for that. And I always crave more. So, well, basically, the second half is very different to the first half. And shit gets really fucking intense, like, to the point where I was, like, I was not prepared. And I had to take a break from the book for a few days because it was just really heavy and I just was not in the right mindset. So it took me a few more days to finish than I thought it would, but, you know, it's fine. I don't have to read every single book I read in one fucking day. <laughs> I felt like the second half was way less focused on Kiana and Ava and their romance and like you know them together and we didn't get as much content the whole time I obviously don't want to spoil anything but some really painful shit happened <laughs> and so I was sad and I just don't love 
plot. <laughs> I had some issues with the pacing in the second half, but overall, I absolutely loved this book. There were dragons in it, they weren't there a lot, and they were there near, near the end, but they were so fucking cool, and I absolutely loved how it all came together and like the ending and everything, and just, I was so invested in Kiana and Ava's relationship the entire time, and the romance was so good, and we actually really got some content, which made me really happy, even though like, again, in the second half, they weren't there. Like, it wasn't focused on the relationship between them, but we still get some good shit. <laughs> and I'm so happy that I read this book, and it was just so good. And so, if you like fantasy and you don't mind some heavy shit happening, definitely check this out. I'm going to leave the content warnings on my Goodreads, which is linked down below, if you want to check that out. There is something absolutely terrible that happened that I was not prepared for at all, so please do check out the content warnings. And yeah, so that is going to wrap up this video. I have been filming this for so fucking long. I literally had like three or four hair changes, <laughs> but I, I really hope that you enjoyed this. Tell me if you would like a part two. I already know what books I would pick for it. So if you would like to see it, please tell me in the comments down below. And again, check out all these amazing people who recommend a lot of sapphic books and just make amazing content. All of them are going to be linked down below. And yeah, subscribe for more videos like this. And if you made it this far in the video, leave any kind of like girl emoji down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'm going to see you soon in another video. Bye!